Hey everybody, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Tonight I am going to make a poor man's geode. I had a subscriber ask me a question regarding making geodes and whether or not you needed to have all these fancy pigments to make one. And the simple answer is no. You do not need any of those pigments to work with resin. You can make a beautiful geode, a painting, whatever it may be that you're trying to design with resin, with acrylic paints, spray paints, alcohol inks, uh, acrylic inks. There's numerous things that you can use. You do not have to have the special epoxy colorants. So for that subscriber, I'm going to show her and all of you how to make a geode using simple things that you can get very locally, um, very inexpensively. You can do something like eggshells instead of crystals that you have to buy. There are tons of alternatives to what you see all of us doing. So I'm going to do one of my eggshell geodes and I hope you guys enjoy it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the eggshells and the way I'm going to do that, now I've never done this before. I've always used um, matte gel to attach them or some type of glue. Today I'm going to try to use hot glue. Now I know I've seen other artists use hot glue. I have used it in the past. Uh, what did I use it for? I'm trying to remember. Oh, one of my geodes. I tried to glue hot glue a crystal shard, <clears throat> excuse me, a crystal shard with it. And for some reason, once the resin hit the hot glue, it began to lift. So I'm going to give it a try again and we'll see how it goes. Now this artist panel I chose because again, this is an inexpensive way to make a piece of art. This was $5.99. It's a uh, 12 by 16 and I used a half off coupon. So got it for a couple of bucks. Now, once it's done, you can choose to either hang it with a command strip. And I think you can get like a 12 pack for a couple of bucks. Or you can put this itself into a frame. So the first thing I had to do is put down my eggshells. So I'm going to try this hot glue thing and see how it works. I'm planning on having a center section of eggshells coming down this way. So I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm going to first stop the stick from falling out. Going to kind of like smear it, if that makes sense. With the tip of the gun and then take an eggshell and press it down along with my fingers into the hot glue. And I just want to see if it does stay. Now, obviously, if a piece of the eggshell lands where there's no glue, it's not going to stay. So that's why I'm kind of pushing on it. And well, it seems kind of tight. In reality, I just need to hold it there long enough to get the resin in there. So again, let me just put some here. And then place another piece over and just press down. I should probably be wearing some gloves, but... Not. Nope. 
I think there's a lot of people under the misconception that you have to have these fancy things to do resin, and you don't. Not at all. And as you can see, the strings come off very, very easily. So you don't have those everywhere in your work. But I wouldn't worry about them just yet. So I'm going to continue gluing this on. I'm not going to bore you with that. And when I come back, we'll go on to the next step. All right, one quick tip that I've figured out while putting my eggshells down. It is easier to take the eggshell, break it into a couple of bigger, smaller pieces, but still leaving them somewhat big, okay? And then take the hot glue and actually pour it into, not pour it, push it into or onto the back side of the eggshell. Take the eggshell, put it on your board, wherever you want to place it, and press it down. I would recommend maybe using a popsicle stick or a tongue depressor so that you don't burn your fingers if the glue is really hot. But that seems to be working a lot easier for me than putting it on the board and pressing the eggshell into it. Okay, so... Now at this point, you're going to take your piece of art and you're going to just tap, 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 get all the loose bits off of there. I have a little tiny one hanging here. And you're going to take your heat gun and you're going to go over it quickly to melt any glue strings that you may have. Very quickly, let it warm up first, and then just quickly go over and get rid of those glue strings. If they don't melt right away, if you have a ton of them, just go pick them up. They'll come off pretty easy. Right? And I don't want you to worry if you have any... Uh, like glue drips or anything like that, like a, a big drip that you see right here. Don't worry about any of that. That's all going to add texture to your piece. So now is the time where you want to get the piece elevated off of the table. So I'm just going to put a couple of cups underneath, maybe. You don't need anything fancy for that either. I have here somewhere, I'll show you in a second. These things that were the bottom of my Dunkin' Donuts cup that I pulled off. And I use those. Nothing sticks to them. I mean, there's all different kinds of things that you could use. Empty tuna cans washed out. You could use those. Remember, we're, we're doing art poor man style because most of us are poor and can't afford the things that we want. We don't need them. We want them. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my gold spray paint. Now you could do this with regular acrylic paint. And I'm going to... Shake it up, and I'm going to spray it, some of it into a paper cup. And essentially, I'm going to add up, end up with some liquid gold leaf that I'm going to paint my eggshells with, just to give them kind of like a base to cover them. Now, essentially, you can just spray paint the eggshells before you crack them onto the board, but I wanted to make this video as simple as possible and didn't want to add the, the time to the video to do that and let it dry and all that. So take a paper cup, 
spray paint will eat through plastic. So it's got to be paper and just spray into the cup in a ventilated area. You should be wearing a respirator. Okay, and now you have some spray paint in the cup. Also, wear a glove, you'll end up with a gold finger. So now all you need is a paintbrush. And you're just going to paint over the eggshells. Dip your brush in the spray paint and just paint over them. And like I said, I'm just doing this to give them a base coat. Now, it just so happens that I do not like this color spray paint. <clears throat> so, I'm going to go to my trusty liquid leaf only because I'm going to have to do two layers of that and I don't want to have to do that for time's sake excuse me one second If you ever buy these and use them and then you can't get the lid off, heat it a little bit. And remember, it's metal, so it's going to be hot when you grab it. So use a cloth or something, and it will unscrew right away for you. It settles it, gets hard around the rim, and then it's hard to get off. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to use this for this, but you can use the spray paint. You can use acrylic paint, whatever you want. Be sh I'm making a poor man's video, right? Look at my paintbrush. We're really going poor man here. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Now, I'm not worried about getting it on the board around the area because I'm going to be putting gold in that area. So, in the end, it doesn't matter. And, yes, I could have just poured the resin over this, but I just want to get down into those spots. And I see a lot of these little pieces are... Uh, a little loose so I would recommend using glue and letting it dry I just think they'll stay a lot better and you can position them easier too okay so I'm gonna paint this whole area and then when I come back we'll go on to the next step okay so those are all painted I'm going to forewarn you right now for the next minute. I'm finishing mixing my resin and going to talk about a couple of uh, price things. So if you know about adding color and prices of things, then you could just skip forward a little bit. But I wanted to mention, um, so for this I'm using Envirotex because, again, some of us don't have the means or even transportation to get, I'm sorry, transportation. Um, we do have transportation. <laughs> I don't know why I said transportation. The mean, the financial means to get things like art resin or the more expensive resin. So we have to have transportation, go to the store, go to Michael's, go to Hobby Lobby, wherever, and get some of the resins they have there. So I'm using Envirotex today. That is from any of the, the hobby stores you can get it. You can also get it online. And for a 32 ounce kit, it is roughly $32.99, but you can use a coupon 
half off, say, say 16 bucks. And, you know, it's not going to be all used on a small project like this. I've mixed up six ounces of resin here. Um, the acrylic paints, you could get deco art. Sometimes they have them on sale, three for a dollar or craft smart. You just have to be careful when using acrylic paints. Acrylic paints, this had this resin has a 25 to 30 minute working time. Once you put acrylic paint in, it's going to shorten that time. You're probably going to get about 20 minutes. And that is if you add the correct amount. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these cups um, almost equally with resin. I'm going to fill them, not split them. And I'm just looking at my colors. Like I know I need less of the light blue color I'm using and more of the others. Less for the res um, glitter. So I kind of just eyeball it. And then I also want to keep some clear to the, the side in case I need it. So this is going, I'm using one color that has spray paint in it. So I'm going to use a paper cup. Okay. So now the first thing I have to do before I start mixing any colors is just put some clear over the center area because I want that to show through. So I'm going to take the little bit of clear I have in this cup. By the way, these cups, they're that shiny plastic. I get them at the Dollar Tree. They're six for a dollar and the resin pulls out of them. To make my life easier, I use Dixie cups to measure my resin. I know they are three ounce cups. I fill them right to the tippity top, one with hardener, one with resin, and I um, dump them all into this cup and mix them up. That way you don't even need a measuring cup. Now, if you're doing a bigger project, then I would suggest having a measuring cup, but you can measure without it. I just wanted to get that on there. Before I go getting my gloves all sticky, I'm going to mix up my colors for you so you can see that. Leave the stick pressed up against the cup to cure. And um, you'll be able to rip it right out once it's cured. And the cup will be clean. All right. So first one we're going to do is the spray paint. Now, the spray paint I'm using is a Color Shift Emerald Turquoise, but it needs to be sprayed on top of an opaque color for you to see it. So, I have an example here I can show you, actually, of an upcoming video. I'm going to be using dried fruit in my resin pour and I used this specific color on it. So I spray painted these black first and then put that color on it. And look how pretty that color is. I absolutely love it. This is going to be a interesting video when I use that. So first goes in the paint. Now, I have here maybe one ounce of resin. 
I'm going to show you this on, no, I'll use this stick. So one ounce of resin, that is the size of a blueberry, a small blueberry. So I'm going to mix that in. Scrape my stick. And now into that, I'm going to add my spray paint. For that, I will use a spoon to show you. So let's try that first. That's probably the size of a dime I poured in. And you can see it, but not enough. So again, do the same thing again. Little tiny amounts just until it gets to the color you want. You don't want to over add coloring. Seeing it a little bit more. And I need one more. Spray paint also helps too with the acrylic because it, it will thin out the resin a little bit. So this color here that I just made will not thicken up as fast as the other ones will. All right, so that's done. Next, we're going to do the two main colors, which are Mysterious by Art Minds. Art Minds is a Michaels product. Now I have probably two ounces of resin in this cup. And I'm just mixing it with the stick because it's been sitting. So for two ounces, it's hard for me to show you on these types of sticks. I'd say, well, two blueberries. Two blueberries should work. Let's see. Resin gets to a very opaque stage quickly with, with um, acrylic paints. So I'm going to add a little tiny bit more. Maybe. <laughs> All right, that should be good. I have no fear. I'm going to pause it after this color. I just wanted to show. That's how I'm going to mix all the colors because I have either one ounce or two ounce in the cup. So one ounce of blueberry size, two ounce, two blue, two blueberries. So let's say one blueberry per ounce. <laughs> All right, so that's good. All right, so I'm gonna pause you, mix up the rest, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I made a little bit of a boo-boo and didn't let this gold leaf dry all the way. So you can see 
some like maroon-ish color bleeding out, but it's fine. It's not everywhere, and that's what gold leaf does. Um, it's got some of kind of a base to it, and I can show you it on the stick here. See that maroon line right there? So it's just something that naturally happens with it, but it's fine because I'm sure it's going to blend in beautifully. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take some of that black and put it. Well, first I got to do the gold. So here's my gold. I used the gold leaf, liquid gold leaf to make this gold. Okay, and I just want to kind of go up the sides with it, but first, I want to scoop some of this clear back up in there. So I really need it in the center more than I need it over here. I'm not worried about this mess here. It'll all be covered. You have to relax when you do this stuff. Don't be overly anal about it, you know. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to take it and kind of outline the eggshells with it. Just like so. I do have a few loose eggshells in there, but it's okay. Because the resin's going to hold all of that down. And then I'm going to do the same over here. Whatever width line that you lay down of resin, like this right here, it will double in, in width when it spreads out. So you have to keep that in mind, especially when you're trying to put it in contained areas. You know, how far is it going to spread once it's done moving? <clears throat> Make sure you also tape the back of your board. I'm just kind of mixing that clear in with this gold. I don't want a clear spot in there like that. Okay, so that's that color. Next, I'm going to do Some of this dark, mysterious blue.
It's a very pretty color. You can get a lot of pretty acrylic colors. I'm kind of just pushing it up to the gold leaf. like so and I'm going to use my stick to fill in a couple of the little areas here. And I'll give it a second to spread on its own right there because it's still a little thick. So now we have that there. Now I have to go to come down the other side. Oh, went a little heavy handed there. Just a little bit. Okay. Again with the stick. I have some clear that's mixing over here with my blue lightening it and I don't like that. Let's show it who's boss. Watch what happens when I'm ready to torch this gold. What it does. It, it's just I love using this stuff in resin. One of my favorite golds to use in resin. You can get a lot of special effects when you mix mediums too. Especially like doing stuff like spray paint with alcohol inks and epoxy pigments and acrylic paint. Lots and lots of special effects that you don't see when you use all of one thing. All right, so this next color is called Malibu by Artful Minds, same as this company here. I'll pour a nice amount of this on there. Give it a second. Before I add more. Before I do add more, I want to add some of this black right up there. Actually, let me start right here.
Okay. go and then the same thing down this side just a little stream of it not right next to the blue I'm gonna like give it a little bit of room to spread out on its own except for right there <laughs> Be careful when using acrylic colored resin because it does get stringy. And the last thing you want is to have a string of black go right through your clear here. So just be careful. See now, if my blue had been there already, I would have got in, in there. It's just very, you should never hold your cup over your artwork anyway. Okay. So now we're going to come over here with the blue that I used on the other side, the Malibu blue. All right, here we go. A little bit of the mysterious left, so what I'm going to do is do a thin line of it right down through here.
just like that. Once it starts getting a little older, the resin, and it's been in the cup for a little bit, it gets a lot easier at one point to control it. That point is right now for me. But then, very quickly, it's going to go to garbage status. So you have to kind of go quick. Right. Same thing over here. I'm sorry, guys. I wish I knew how to fast forward and do video, video editing so you don't have to watch stuff like this, but I don't. And I'm still waiting for, you know, the 30-year-old hot stud to knock on my door to help me. And it's waiting game at this point. <laughs> I'm just so techno technologically challenged. Trust me, if you knew me. It's a miracle that I'm even doing this. But it would be nice to uh, be able to fast forward some of this stuff for you. running out of this blue here and I got a little tiny bit left to do it's really gonna suck if I run out now All right, I think I got it There we go. Got it. Okay, so now I have some uh, bright aqua green by Liquitex. So I'm going to pour that really quick. Oh, sweet baby Jesus, come on. It's very stringy. I'll be careful. I see I dropped some into my other color there, of course. All right.
If you're going to use acrylic paint to color, don't mix up all of your resin at once, especially, well, if you're doing a painting, it's okay, but if you're doing something like this where it, it takes time to get things situated, do not mix it all up at once. I did not mix all of mine up at once. So I still have this gold here. This, of course, is driving me nuts. This clear that's in here. Sometimes you can get it to mix in. the colored resin, the clear. Okay. And then up through here also. Even though I don't need it in these areas, I like to put make both sides match. Okay. So... have some more of that black still. I think I'll do another area of that. In the black area, I think I'm going to be putting that glitter. All right, I'm going to spread out that black and mix up a little more resin, and I will be right back. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I uh, had to make some more colors. I'm a little upset at myself about this area rushing, but I'll be able to fix it. Or maybe I'll just leave it. It's kind of cool looking. I don't know. We'll see once we put the glitter in there what happens. All right. So off camera, all I did was pour this little line of uh, gold, spread out the black. So now I'm going back in with some more of that mysterious blue. Or I should say mysterious. It's not named mysterious blue, but it is a blue. I've only mixed up this one color because I don't know how much I need of each color now. So at this point, I have to start doing one at a time with the mixing. I'm 
come on. There you go. I just made you. You can't be thick already. Yes. I will not be putting any more of the black in. I feel I have enough of that. That. Next, I need to add some glitter in. So I'm using this glitter by Moxie. I got that at AC More. And you want to put quite a bit into your resin. So I have an ounce of resin in this cup. And I've added a tablespoon and a half of glitter. Now this resin here was from the first batch, so it's really thick. I find that it's easier to control when it's really thick, but did I wait too long? This may be too thick. Let's see. Go right down the center of the black with it. Come on. It's getting there. Grab another wad of it. There we go. Hi. <coughs> All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing to the other two black sections. Okay, so I added my glitter up all the black parts, and then I did a little thicker line on the side of these two blue here. Now I'm going to add some gold. Right up alongside of that. Thank you. 
breaths over here. I'll often use the rim of my cup when it's empty to fill in areas like this. There's nothing wrong with that. Especially when you don't have a stick to use. If for some reason your stick dropped it in some black like mine just did. Just watch the rim of your cup. Make sure there's no glitter on it like mine just had. <laughs> Again, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. All right, so next up, I'm going to mix up. Uh, I think we're going to just put a whole bunch of this aqua blue here and here. And then add maybe a little bit of this lighter blue in. Sound good? Okay, perfect. I know you guys just answered me. I'm just going to pour it in straight from the bottle, only because I'm not measuring this time. Um, I'm at the end of the rope here, and I don't really need to do that at this point. It doesn't matter if I add too much or not, because it's just going right onto the board quick. I'm just put some over the side here so I have a little extra more than what I need in this cup. They have a very thin little side. It's a thin board, but Okay, perfect. And then and then ladies and gentlemen, little itsy bits of the light blue. I might have to add a little more that glitter. I'm really loving it. It's a pretty glitter. Love that gold. Love it, love it. Here we go. Let's see here. I'm gonna follow the shape, maybe.
almost done. Promise. Oh, when working on these, you want to make sure that you keep the, the sides pretty drip-free. There can be resin on them, but um, you don't want big drips drying on the side. Like those drips, those pesky drips that don't go all the way over the edge. They kind of just sit on the side. I don't know if that makes sense, but because if you try to frame it, it's going to have a hard time with that one little ball of resin sitting there. All right, so I'm going to add in some more glitter here and then some gold glitter and then we're done. Now this resin is a little, a little looser than the last resin I poured the glitter into. So I'm going to mix it in and let it sit for a minute because what happens if you use it and it's really runny still is it spreads out flat and it goes everywhere. So I'm going to add a little bit more and while it's sitting I'm going to try to fix that center and we will be done. All right, so I'm gonna take a stick. You see what the issue is here with this stuff. See, it'll mix back in. But I'm thinking that Maybe I should just leave it alone. I don't want to mess up anything else that's going on here. Especially the gold. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to get some gold glitter here. And let's see. For gold, I'm going to use some of Laura's Art Corner. This is 70 grit, or not 70 grit. Um, no, I'm sorry, this one isn't Laura's Art Corner. It's a smaller grit. Hers is a super shard. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this in first, and then I'll use some of hers too. And I can show you the difference between the two just so you know. Be careful doing this with your fingers when you're putting this stuff on because it is sharp. Now you don't even have to do this. You could just have the eggshell for the design, which I originally wanted to do, but because I had that problem of being a lame brain and I miss rushy pants. That happened. It's nobody's fault but my own. So Just covering it up with this glitter. And this glitter is so big that it actually looks like rocks. And this is not even the biggest one. Hers is, Laura's is bigger. So 
So I just put it randomly in some spots there. And now I will show you the other one. Okay, so this is 70 grit. And let me put some in my hand. I'll do side by side for you guys. Sorry if the screen's shaking there. Okay, so this is 70 grit. And this is Laura, her super shards. A lot bigger, right? So, I have a link to her store below if you're interested. She is offering a coupon for my channel. $10 off a $95 order. She sells the Lorez pigments and all that. So, check them out. Hey, 10 bucks is pretty close to free shipping. Right. All right. I think I'm done. I think I've had you guys on over an hour now. And I do apologize. Just imagine I talked to you not here in the room with me over an hour. Imagine if you were here, you'd never be able to leave and never shut up. <laughs> All right, time to torch. Oh no, it's not time to torch. Well, it is, but I have to add the last glitter line. I almost forgot about that. There are some magical things happening over here that you guys can't see. But let me tell you, it's pretty cool. One thing I'm not happy about is this right here, though. So my table is not level. Because so I can see it's pulling that way. Let me just fix this really quick. Alrighty. That is better. Let's put the glitter down and then I'll give you a close up. This is so much easier to control if you let it get a little thicker before you start working with it. So much easier. So, I'm sure the question will come up, why did I not pour gold over the eggshells, gold resin? You know, it covers them, and you won't see the cracks and all that as good as doing it the way that I did it. So, that's the purpose of that. Maybe if you did a painting... And you only did one layer. You would still be able to see them a little bit. But. I can't even guarantee that. Just 
fixing this over here and we are done. Another tip rubbing alcohol is the dollar store, dollar, but they only sell the 70% type, which it tends to work in art, but not as good as the 91%. Um, I buy it to clean my hands, my gloves. Um, my gloved hands, I should say. Clean utensils with it. It's perfectly fine. You have to use soap and water on your hands to get the resin off. Alcohol wipes, alcohol, rubbing alcohol on your skin will open up your pores and help the resin to seep in. So you want to be sure to be safe and use soap and water. So here we go. I'm going to see if I can get this gold to do what it does when I torch it. Maybe too old to do it. Usually I can show you. See those little circles right there in it? I'm sorry about the shadow. Uh, right here. See them? That's cool. And then it also does stuff like this here like that. Almost it lines itself. Or you can see it better over here. Some really cool effects. Some more of those little holes. And they're not holes, they're filled in. It's just they look like holes. So anyway, that is my poor man's geode made with the least amount or least expensive supplies that I could find. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them below. Um, for this one here, it will, it is done until it sells. And then I will do a top coat and make it all shiny and beautiful for everybody to see. So, I want to wish you all a great night. Please subscribe to my channel. If you are not, click the thumbs up if you like the video and want to see more. And happy pouring. Okay, lovies. Here is the end result. And I just took a marker and drew a couple of lines here and there, that's all. The center calmed down a little bit where it was bleeding, so it kind of fits in. I'm fine with it. But I'll do a top coat and maybe put a little tiny bit of gold where that little bit of orangey tinge is or I just might leave it alone I think it just all goes together good so I hope you enjoyed